when I tell people how we live in the the, the <laughs> thousand square foot cinder yeah. block home. Yeah, hey, hey, hey Libby, had, Libby, wish you would stop telling that story too. Does. By the way, she gives, she gives, she gives. She gives Buck gets very upset when we yes. tell the story about the thousand square foot cinder block home with no mm -hmm. indoor plumbing, uh, mm -hmm. a tin roof that you could actually lay on your back and you could see the sky from the bed. And That's correct. Complained. And I told the story in my Hall of Fame speech. Mm -hmm. But growing up in that environment, what? Because when I, I also spent, you know, we tell when I tell people, I never spent the night at a friend's house. I've Correct. never spent the night at a family member's house. And people can't believe that. Correct. I, and that, the, the first time I stayed away from home, I went to 4-H camp at at, uh, at Cherokee, I think yep. it was. Yeah, uh -huh. I think, then God, I was a senior no, then. It was, it, was, it was a Rock Eagle. Rock, he, Rock Eagle. You, yeah, you were, but I couldn't, you were, I couldn't. You were a member of the Cherokee tribe. I couldn't remember what it was because it was so long ago. But yeah. Um, the thing is, is when you grow up that way, and that's the only way you know, mm -hmm. you don't have anything to compare it to. Because, right. yeah, we saw our friends every day at school and some at church, but you had nothing to compare it to. So guess what? It was our norm. And our norm was, you know what? God, I, I, I wish the roof didn't leak. You know, I wish we didn't have to get up, you know, Monday through Sunday and, you know, herd hogs or pick tobacco or grind feed or you know I, I wish we didn't but that's what we knew and you know you and I used to talk all the time about the only thing we wanted to do was play football and we knew we were going to never get the chance uh to play football because we were always working so mm -hmm. when you know that's all you know there is no I'm going to make it better because you're going to make it better how all you know is farming so that was all we knew did you think when we were working the hours, and I always use the term can't the can't, and people are like, well, what does can't the can't mean? Can you explain you to people that's going to be watching this what can't the can't mean? Uh, you, you see what you, you, you working from the time you can't see when you get up until you can't see at night. It's, it's dark to dark, and it's, it, the job is never done. It's just you got to go home and get some sleep. It's not like, you know, it's a nine to five or I finished my work, I'm going to get off early. We never got off early. There was no such thing as, you know what? We're finished picking this tobacco. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to take the rest of the day off. No, mm -hmm. that, that never happened. So, but like I said, Shannon, you know, it, it's easy in hindsight to go back and say how tough we had it. And it's easy in hindsight to try and make our upbringing so much different from everyone else by going, you know, living in a house that didn't have running water rain you know looking at the sun we can lay in bed and watch the sunrise uh that kind of stuff you know what it did it, it it didn't make us stronger it just made us we were like if if it was to be we were gonna have to do it. and we were always like that from our our playing days is hey we were great teammates i'd like to think but if there's an opportunity to make a play coach put it on me because i can accept the success but i can also accept the failure if it doesn't go our way. And I think that's strictly because of how we were brought up. And I, I say this to, to people, and, and I used to say it to young people when I spoke more all the time, it ain't by accident that two guys from Glenville, Georgia, not only graduated from college, but made it to the, the NFL. That ain't by accident, but it's not by design either. I mean, I just think that, you know, and I tell people, you learn a lot about guys if you tell me how they were raised and tell me what their experiences are, I can tell you who they are and how we were raised. Uh, we had similar experiences from the time we left Glenville until the time you got into television. Our lives were pretty much mirror images of each other, even though we're, you know, we, we are two, three years apart in age, but we're two years apart in athletics. So give yeah. the people a little backdrop of kind of some of the jobs you and I had. Well, well, we, we had a family. Remember, it was our grandmother, grandfather, me, you, and our sister, not to mention our Aunt Jane, our Aunt Shermadine, our Aunt Gladys, and sometimes our Aunt Marinelle living in that thousand foot cinder block house, too. Correct. So it wasn't like there was a lot of room, but also, our jobs. Also, Dietrich. Dietrich, my sister, uh, our, our yeah. nephew was there. So, guess what? It, it wasn't like we had chores and we could finish our chores. We definitely had to go to school and church. Those two things were a must. Correct. We were at school, we were at church. But then there was the tobacco picking and the, uh, you know, planting my grandmother's garden. There's also the moving and the 
situating of the, the hogs that we had, grinding of the feed. So when hogs got out, it wasn't like, you know, hey, we got we lost a hog. Oh, well, we got to go search for it. So we were going through hell and high water in situations where I am to this day. I am still amazed that none of us ever got bit by a snake and none of us ever died because of snake bite. <laughs> because I can remember our times wrapping our hands around tobacco stalks and there'll be eight foot rattlesnake wrapped under, sitting under a leaf, or we were walking through swamps in the dead of summer and never got bit by a moccasin. I, I'm amazed, but we had, and not to mention, and I'll talk just about you and I, when we were in high school, when I was in high school, you would have been in middle school, we would get up and go to school go and go to practice, go home. And as soon as we got home from practice, we had to get in uh, Earl Bacon or our Uncle James's truck to go catch chickens where we were making a dollar a thousand. And we would, you know, it's hard to no, catch chickens No, no, chicken no, go back, go back to that. Because how much were we making? If you caught we a thousand a dollar, chickens, how much money dollar, did you We were making a dollar a thousand. So you, for every thousand chickens that were in that house, each individual got paid one dollar. So imagine working from 11 to two catching uh, <laughs> uh, 14,000 chickens, you made $14. Right. Or 10,000 chickens, you made $10. Right. And so you get home at three and you had to clean yourself up, try to get as much sleep as you can because uh, seven o'clock and on the way to school was happening the next day. So, it, and like I said, as tough as it seems or sounds now, wasn't that bad back then because guess what? we. We got to be with our friends or our cousins. Right. Uh, we were making money. So it was a good deal for us. Well, the school was, was the easy part. It was the summer when you yeah. had to work in tobacco. And then yeah. you come home. Remember, we would come home. Not only did we play during the lunch break, we would eat, play basketball. Grand's like, boy, come in here. Y'all gonna have a heat stroke. And sure I'm is. like, hold on. <laughs> you saying it's too hot to play basketball, but it's not too hot to work in the field. And so we were in a long right. sleeve shirt. We were in a long sleeve shirt and blue jeans in the field. It wasn't like we were dressing cool. Right. We got a long sleeve shirt and blue jeans on dressing right. in that tobacco field. So yeah, it was, those were, were some definitely different times uh, for us growing up. But I definitely believe it definitely helped shape how we were uh, from the time we left Glenville until the time we got to television. I'm about to tell the story about how like we were working to the back of field and then we would play and then we had to get ready to get on that chicken truck that night. So we were working and I remember, <laughs> I remember because you at, uh, at the time I was making five bucks a day. You remember, you remember when I told granny, I was making five bucks a day. Libby told much. granny that, she, let, hold on, let me she, tell you, <laughs> Libby, Libby told granny that Lanny and I, Lanny is our first cousin, that yeah. I, Granny and Shannon did was play. Uh -huh. What did Granny tell me? It's if he making five bucks a day, it's too much. <laughs> <laughs> it's too much. She said it was too much money, and, and I I agree because all you and Lanny were buying were diet cokes and honey buns anyway. Oh, okay. you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's tell the story. Let's tell the story. Mister <sighs> Joe, who was our boss at the time, Joe Tatum, he just passed yeah. recently. He set us up. A, a, a line of credit at the at the convenience at store. the convenience store, yeah. And so we could go in there and get anything we want on credit, knowing that Mr. Joe was going to bring us in there. We we're going to cash our check, and we can pay. So when Mr. Joe said he was going going to the going to the town, going to the store, <laughs> what would I always get? I was probably six or seven years old. Three hundred bars, <laughs> three hundred bars, and three coats. Three sodas. I'm like, he couldn't get one at one. Mr. Joe, bring me 300 bars and three Coca Colas. Every time he had to go, it was three and three. It, it was it was three it was three and three. It but, was three and three. But do you remember also, Mr. Joe? He had, he had a farm and he had cattle and cattle eat hay. Somebody mm. had to bail that hay. Mr. Yep. Joe had a big farm. He had yep. pizza. he had watermelons. Uh, yeah. We had the uh, 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 broader seconder. He had yeah. okra. He had yeah. tomatoes. We That's had right. to pick up pecans for the dashers. That's correct. That's correct. We had a lot of jobs, and the thing was, is we would have done even more just to put money in our pockets to lessen the load on Granny. At the time, she was the only breadwinner for the most part in the house, her and Libby. Right. And so we would have done anything to buy our own clothes. Or buy our own shoes, buy our own basketball, our ba um, basketball shoes, football shoes, track shoes. We would have done just about any and everything. You know what to do. 
hit the subscribe button to become an official member of Club Shay Shay, where we always do something before two something.